Hey guys, Eric Downs here, drummer, producer, musical director based out of Los Angeles, California. Today's video is going to be a follow-up to my previous video, Anatomy of a Playback Rig. Ever since I posted that video about two years ago or so, uh, I've gotten a ton of comments and emails and DMs uh, with tons of great feedback and a lot of really great questions. Uh, and I'd been meaning to post a video to answer some of those questions. Um, but recently I found myself uh, fortunate enough to be musical directing and playing on a lot of really great shows with a lot of really great touring artists. Um, and I was building a ton of playback sessions and along with it, I was building or updating a lot of playback rigs. So I figured I'd take the opportunity to show you a little bit about, you know, what, what I've been working on lately, the types of rigs that I've been building and, um, and what they do. So what I have today are two totally different rigs for two totally different artists. They're operated in different ways and they do completely different things, but they're both really cool. And I just want to show you what they do. So let's check it out. Uh, on my left here is actually the updated uh, version of the exact rig that was in the previous video. You can see we've got the Motu Ultralight Mark III interface here, still kicking, going strong. Uh, but you might, you might notice that this rig overall is a lot more compact and clean than it used to be. Uh, and that is largely due to the fact that there's no DI rack in here. That right away was probably the most common question I would get uh, all the time. It was, uh, uh, what DI rack do I buy and you know, what do they do and, and do I even need one? And uh, this really inspired me to take a look at my understanding of live audio and with a very, very little bit of uh, research, I realized that if you're just running line level audio, like tracks out of a computer, out of an interface, then no, you, you don't need a DI rack. Uh, in fact, no playback rig that I build these days has one. Uh, and they've all basically been replaced with a very simple TRS to XLR loom, like this one that you can get on Amazon for like 35 bucks. It's great, got a bunch of them. Now, the new guy to this rig is the silver guy here in the second slot, and this is a Tascam vocal processor. So for this particular show, we decided we wanted to add an extra layer of polish to the lead vocals live. And so the way we use this thing is I've set up a bunch of different presets with different effects, chains, and things like that uh, for each, each of the different songs. And when, as, as the songs play, uh, out of Ableton, we send program changes out through the Motu, uh, MIDI out to the MIDI in of the Tascam. And they change on the fly. So when I'm operating this playback rig on stage, triggering tracks, uh, we're getting our clicks, our count offs, song titles, our tracks, we're getting our live MIDI instruments, all that kind of stuff. And in addition now, uh, the vocals, uh, the vocal processing changes song to song. It's all completely automatic. Uh, never have to look at the thing, never have to touch it, interact with it in any way. It's great. Uh, last but not least, or maybe least, is at the bottom here is the power conditioner. Uh, sorry, Furman, there's not really that much that's very interesting about that. It is a good idea to have one though, so go get one. Uh, moving on to our second rig of the day. We have this guy, you can see he's quite a bit bigger than the first one with some different toys in it. The main difference between uh, these two rigs uh, is two things. Number one, this rig is operated side stage uh, by Playback Tech. It's not on stage with any of the members on stage. And secondly, we've decided to run this rig redundantly. So very briefly, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, redundant playback. The idea is that you have two identical computers running two identical playback sessions uh, so that if you know something happens to one of the computers it falls off the table, someone spills a drink on it and elephant stomps on it. The audio, the playback switches immediately, seamlessly, imperceptibly uh, to the second computer uh, instead of crashing and burning and destroying the show. <laughs> Uh, so to do that, we picked up this audio interface. This is an iConnectivity Play Audio 12. Uh, easily the best thing in the game right now for what it does. This single $500 box uh, replaces what used to be three different pieces of gear that would normally cost somewhere around 2,500 bucks. 
great piece of gear, works really well. Um, and right above it, you can see we have this big guy. This is a Helix uh, guitar amp and effects modeler. Uh, not to sidetrack too much, this thing is really great. It's awesome. Sounds great, really easy to use. Um, and just like uh, in the first rig, we send patch changes, again, through Ableton, through the interface, to the Helix to change guitar uh, amp presets, effects presets, all sorts of chains like that, song to song, or most often within sections of a song. So a verse might be really chill, um, a chorus might have a little bit of drive, and then a lead tone will come on and have a totally different tone altogether. Now the Play Audio 12 doesn't have any MIDI ports built into it. So uh, we had to pick up its little brother over here. This is the iConnect MIDI 2. Uh, and after connecting that via USB to the Play Audio 12, you then have two pairs of MIDI ports uh, that you can connect all your stuff with. So that's how we send our patch changes. Ableton, Play Audio 12, I Connect MIDI 2, up to the Helix. Again, all completely automated, seamless, easy. Lastly, we do have, again, our, we have a nice convenient rack drawer in here. So, so our cables and batteries and all sorts of good stuff, we, including our nice MIDI controller here that we trigger tracks with. And then again, to round it off, and strong, good old power conditioner. Thank you, Furman. Um, that's about it for the day. Uh, if you, as always, if you have any questions, if comments, or uh, if I've said anything wrong today, you want to correct me, uh, feel free to comment below. Uh, shoot me an email or uh, follow me on Instagram. Shoot me a DM, whatever you want to do. And until next time, take care. See ya.